Hello and welcome to our Social Hackers Academy podcast. Here at Hack the Tech Industry podcast, we will be talking with experts to learn more about how to become a web developer and land a job. Let's welcome Benz and uh, Benz, the, um, the state is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let me share my screen. Um, it says that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Can you please? Um... Uh, let me, yes, sorry. Um, uh, you should be, okay. Let me know if you can, yep. sorry for Oh, okay. looks, like, uh, looks like it works now. Um, so I'm going to start with a um, very small presentation and then we are going to uh, live code. Um, so um, just a very quick intro uh, about what we are going to talk about now. Um, we are going to look through uh, testing strategies of, um, of web applications and web software testing in, in general. And um, then we will jump into a very, very small application. Um, and we are going to write some end-to-end -end tests. Uh, and then we are going to add a very small feature, new feature to the application, um, which is going to break some of the tests. And um, that way we will discover a bug and then we are going to fix it. Um, at the end, we are going to have uh, a quick Q&A session. So if there is um, anything that um, you are particularly interested in, or if you have any questions, then uh, you will be uh, you will get the chance to, to ask them at the end. Um, I would like to start with a very small disclaimer that I am not uh, an expert in software testing in any way. Um, I've been using um, Cypress and, and Jest and a few testing libraries uh, for the past few years, um, but that is not uh, what uh, my job consists of primarily. So this is something that I am very enthusiastic about, but I'm, I'm not an expert. So um, yeah, this is basically just a nice way of saying that you shouldn't believe a single word I'm, I'm saying here today. Um, so the, the first question I would like to answer here is, is what, what is a test really? Um, and um, what I would like to say here is that not so long ago, I've been working at a company uh, who released a new version of their software every eight weeks. Um, and uh, during those eight weeks, uh, we spent six weeks of actually writing new features and fixing bugs. And uh, then there was a period of two weeks where um, we've been doing software testing. And we, that was a manual process that meant that a lot of developers and other people at the company uh, literally sat in front of the, the software and we were looking through absolutely everything just to make sure that things did not break. And uh, well, many times things did break and um, this was a very cumbersome and, and also very expensive process. Um, and um, and um, software testing is um, like automated software testing is a way that can make your life easier when, when it comes to this. So a test is basically code, right? You would do write code to verify that the code that you wrote previously uh, works um, and, um, and it works exactly the way how you intended it to work. Um, so the, the reason why we are writing tests is, um, well, in one word, it's confidence. Um, and that confidence, uh, I think, manifests in, in two different ways. Uh, one thing is that uh, it can give you confidence that your stuff works, uh, that the code that you wrote does exactly what, uh, what you wanted it to do. And uh, it can also give you confidence that when you change your software, then the things that have previously worked will still work. Um, and these are all, uh, th these are both very, very important if you want to make sure that um, whenever you release a new version of your application, um, then uh, you can do that uh, without breaking something and, and uh, causing some trouble to your uh, customers or users. Um, so uh, the, 
with that company that I work with, we release the software every, uh, once every eight weeks. Uh, but uh, software companies nowadays, um, startups and and especially bigger companies, um, they have a lot shorter release cycles. So it's um, it's very common that you release a new version of your software every single day, or even multiple times a day, or in some cases hundreds uh, and, and hundreds of times uh, every single day. And you really want to make sure that um, when you do that, um, your, your software still works. Um, so there is a model of, um, of software testing, which is called uh, the testing pyramid. This is something you might have encountered. Uh, it's a very, um, very common model that uh, you will see in uh, many blog posts and, um, and a lot of literature that, that talks about software testing. So I just want to go through uh, this real quick um, and, um, and see how we can basically categorize our, um, our tests. So on the very bottom of the pyramid, there is something called static tests. Um, these are tools like ESLint and TypeScript um, and, uh, and some things that can run in your editor. And these are used to identify some mistakes and errors and, and typos while you are writing your software. Um, and on the second level, uh, there is a stack called unit tests. Uh, these are, these are uh, very, very small tests that will verify that a very, very small part of your application does its job correctly. This small thing can be a single function. It can be a single component, um, something which is, is really small and uh, has a very well-defined job to, to carry out. Um, and um, these tests are, are relatively easy and quick to write. And um, they just tell you that, um, that these small functions and, and components uh, do they work uh, as they are supposed to. Uh, another thing that comes here or comes up here is snapshot testing, which is something that you can use with front-end frameworks, uh, also with React. Um, which is a special kind of unit test. Um, it basically verifies um, that a uh, component renders the output uh, with which it is supposed to. And then you can save that output. And whenever you make change to that component, then you can generate that output again. And then you can compare the two outputs and uh, make sure that the change is actually what, what you intended it to be. Uh, the next level is called integration tests, uh, which are very similar to unit tests. Um, they, are, they are relatively small tests. And um, the difference between unit tests and integration tests is that unit, uh, integration tests will take uh, two or, or a few parts of those small units and or functions and, and components and they will verify whether those components work well together they the the communication between them uh is uh, exactly how it is supposed to be and on the very top of the pyramid uh, there is something called end-to-end -end testing um, which is a very very different type of test uh, this typically runs um, in a way that it simulates uh, how your user would use the application. Um, so it uh, runs in a browser, either an actual browser or a simulated browser, and it, it basically goes through the application and, uh, and checks the, the user flows, the user workflows, and uh, verifies that, that the user can carry out the tasks, um, which um, the, the application was designed for in the first place. Uh, the reason why this model is uh, built as a pyramid um, is that if you go from the bottom all the way to the top, then there are some things that change. Um, the, uh, on the bottom of the pyramid, the tests that you write are very, very quick. Uh, means that they run quickly. They don't uh, take a lot of time to run. And uh, if you climb up the, um, the, the pyramid, then on the very top, this test will become slower. They will also become more expensive. Um, and here, it quite literally means that time is money. Uh, many times you want to run your tests in, uh, in a cloud environment, like on GitHub or a tool called uh, Jenkins, for example. There are many others. 
And uh, if you're using these tools, then many times you will have to pay for the, the computational um, costs of, uh, of running those tests. So the more complex your tests are, the more uh, CPU time, the more memory you're using, and the more actual money you will have to pay. Uh, but the other thing that increases as you go to the um, go towards the top of the pyramid is your confidence uh, in your software. Uh, unit tests and integration tests can give you a certain level of confidence, uh, but we will see a very good example where an extremely high unit test and integration test coverage uh, is still not enough to detect certain kind of flows in the application. Um, so, without further ado, let's uh, let's uh, get into the coding part. Um, so here I would like to show you um, a very simple uh, React application uh, that I wrote uh, exactly for this um, this occasion. Uh, I'm just going to open it real quick. I already have it uh, running here. Um, let me open a new tab. Um, so this application is um, a mood tracker. Um, it has uh, <clears throat> five buttons where you can check in with yourself uh, how you feel. And uh, here on this bottom area, which you can open and close, uh, it will register uh, the, um, the moods where, where you've checked in. Uh, this is pretty much all the application does. There is no database, so if I refresh the page, then this, this check-in switch just uh, disappear. Um, and there is one small extra feature, which is a settings panel here on the side uh, where you can turn on or off dark mode. Um, so this is pretty much it. <clears throat> this is a React application. Uh, I was using Create React App to bootstrap everything. And uh, as you can see, uh, I have broken down the, the application to smaller components. So if I go to this file, uh, app.js, this is where everything starts. There is going to be the check-in component, the check-ins component, and the settings, which is, uh, this is the check-in component where you can check in. This is the check-ins component where you can see the, the list of the previous check-ins. And there you have the settings component here on the side. And um, all these components uh, consist of even smaller components. So every single file that you have here is, uh, is relatively small and, um, and serves a, a, a single purpose. Yes, so, so, sorry to interrupt. Could you uh, just um, maybe zoom a little bit on VS Code? Yeah, so, sure. Uh, yeah. That's much better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do here, maybe I will have to zoom in here a little bit more as well. Um, so um, as maybe you, you've seen uh, in my VS Code, I have a bunch of test files here already, uh, the, the orange ones. Now, these are tests using uh, Jest and uh, Create React, uh, no, uh, uh, React testing library and React Hooks testing library. Um, and um, actually, I added, uh, like here in the package JSON file, if I open this real quick, you will be able to see that I added uh, test runner and I added another script called test coverage, uh, which is just going to run just and it's going to generate a coverage report. Um, and uh, that means that it's going to tell us how much proportion, how big of a proportion of the application is actually covered with this unit test that we have created. So if I just run npm test, then you will be able to see that there are quite a few tests here. It's going to just run everything uh, fully quickly. So the entire thing took a bit less than four seconds and we had um, 10 test suits that consisted of 30 tests and everything has passed. So let's just generate the coverage report real quick. Uh, that's going to be npm run test coverage and it's just going to run the tests again and it's also going to analyze which parts of the code which branches and which clients are covered and here you will be able to see that we have a hundred percent test coverage meaning that we just has used absolutely every single function every single component and every single line in the application um, so based on the unit test coverage we could say that we have a very very high um, um, confidence that the application actually works um, 
Well, to be honest, it's not entirely bug free. Uh, there, there is already one thing in it that uh, I would like to fix, uh, but um, I, I'm not going to point it out right now. Um, however, what we are going to do now is that we are going to go to Cypress Word and we are going to cover the application with end-to-end uh, -end tests as well. Uh, the way how you can install Cypress is pretty much the same way as you can do it with Jest. Uh, you can install it as a dependency just using npm install. And then uh, you can use two commands called Cypress open and Cypress run. I added them here in the, the npm scripts as well. Uh, this one is running, uh, it will open a user interface where you will be able to interact with your tests. And Cypress CI is something which runs in the terminal similarly to now uh, to how just is running here so i'm just going to run npm run cypress here which is going to open cypress for us now um, so there are two spec files i have created uh, there's absolutely nothing in them so we will start um, start writing them here uh, there, there is this Cypress folder. These are where the, um, uh, the test files are. Uh, and um, right now I, I created two and um, here are some, some empty, tests, empty tests that uh, now we are going to fill in. Uh, and there is this extra file called uh, commons.js, uh, which is um, going to be uh, um, another file that we are going, uh, we, will, uh, we will work in. Um, where we will uh, specify some of the things that we will just use here. Um, I'm not going to go really into the details of the internals of Cypress. The documentation of uh, the framework is, is really amazing and it's very, very easy to get started. So if you're interested in learning it, then you just go to cypress.io and, uh, and you can read a lot about it. But uh, teaching you Cypress is not really the point of, um, of this talk. Um, so that basically means that that there might be some black magic happening here, and um, and that's that's probably okay. And if you're really interested in learning how you can um, uh, how you can write tests like this, then um, yeah, you should just um, head to the documentation, and um, it will be very easy to to get started. Um, so here in this file, I have the check-ins and I have the settings spec. Um, I already wrote, uh, like in, in human language, the three tests here and the one test here, which are the things that I want to test. The first one I want to do is um, I want to make sure that the check-ins interface expands and collapses, which basically means that I can open this and then I can close it again. Um, then I will see that the check-ins are registered when the check-ins interface is closed, and they are also registered when the check-ins interface is open. Um, so when they are when it is closed like this, then I can still click on the buttons, and then I can open it, and I can see the um, the the moods uh, registered here. And I can do it the other way around. I can just open the interface, click the buttons, and they will all be here. Um, and then we will have a fourth one in the other spec file, uh, which is for the settings. It's going to check whether the dark mode can be turned on and then off again. Uh, so we will start with this one and I'm going to work in these two files simultaneously. This one here, the spec file is going to read very, very close to human language. And uh, here in the, the commands, we are going to teach Cypress how to do certain things that we are going to use here. So this is going to be a bit more specific to the internals of, of Cypress. Um, so uh, let's start here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just I say ci dot, which basically means that I want Cypress to do something. And here I can just start using uh, these Cypress commands, which are basically functions that you can chain. Uh, so I'm going to say that uh, like the, the, the structure of this test where checking interface expands and collapses is going to be that I will check whether whether by default it is collapsed, I will click the show button, then I will see if it is visible, I will click the show button, like the hide button, and then I will check again if uh, if it's hidden again. So now it's collapsed, now it's open, now it's collapsed again. This is exactly what the test is going to do. Um, so I will, um, I will start by checking whether it is um, uh, open or not. So I'm going to call this, I assert check-ins open, uh, and I expect it to be false. Uh, and then I'm going to click on the show button. So I'm going to do show check-ins. And then I'm going to check again 
uh, whether it is open. So this time I expect that to be true. And then I'm going to hide it. And then after I've uh, after, after it's hidden, I'm going to check once again if it's a, if it is not visible. So this is exactly how this test is going to look like. Uh, well, Cypress obviously does not know how the check-ins open and the show check-ins and the hide check-ins um, works. So this is where this comments that JS file is going to come into the picture, and we are just going to teach Cypress how to do this. Uh, and we are going to do that by defining uh, Cypress comments. So let's start with the first one, uh, assert check-ins open. Uh, I'm just going to say this, assert check-in is open, it's going to be a function. Um, and that function is going to take a parameter uh, which specifies whether the, the panel should be open or not. So I'm just going to call it should be open. Um, and here what I'm going to say is that if the panel should be open, then we are going to do something. Uh, and if the panel is closed, then we are just going to do something else. Um, so here in the application, and now I will have to refresh this uh, so I can enable the React uh, um, developer tools. Uh, and I will go into the components. Uh, well, actually, I can just stay in elements. And then you will be able to see that I've been using this, um, uh, these attributes called data test ID. And in some cases, uh, some other data test attributes. Um, and um, these are very useful if you want to write uh, tests, uh, either unit tests, integration tests, or end-to-end or -end tests. <clears throat> you could also use just uh, class names, or you could uh, make some assertions based on the text. But these are all things that can change when your application changes. Let's say you want to update the text to something else. So instead of awesome, here I want to say amazing. Uh, and uh, if my test is expecting that it says awesome here, then, uh, then I will have to update the tests even though my application did not break. Um, and, uh, and that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, so these kind of data test attributes um, uh, are, are very useful uh, when it comes to this. So what I'm going to do here right now first is I'm going to check whether this component is, um, is collapsed or not. So it has a data test ID called check-ins. Uh, so I'm just going to take this as is, and I'm going to uh, find that component with Cypress. Uh, you can do that with a selector, which is uh, a query selector. It's very similar to a CSS. Well, it's actually identical to, to the CSS selector that you would use. Um, and uh, this will make Cypress find that. And then I'm just going to say that I want to check the height of that component. That is going to be the outer height. Uh, and I will expect it to be um greater than zero and um, this is where the um, the check-in um, panel should be open and when it is closed then i expect it to be exactly zero um so this is this is the first comment that we have and this will make this one and this one and this one these three lines um work well, hopefully, if I did not make any mistakes. So now we have to teach Cypress how it can click this button, the show button, and the hide button. So I'm just going to inspect this once again. This also has a data test ID um, uh, attribute on it um, very conveniently. So I'm just going to say uh, the same structure, cypress.commands.add. Uh, I'm going to use this name, show chickens. And then uh, it's going to take, be a function. Um, as we did it here, it does not take any parameters. So I'm just going to take the ci.get. Um, and here I will add the query selector once again for this element. Um, hey, can we zoom in just a little bit more, Benz? Yeah. Thank you very much. So this will find the uh, the element with the data test ID show check-ins, which is going to be the button. And now I just want to click on this button. So I'm just going to say that click. Um, and when we want to do the same thing, but the other way around, hiding it, then I will do the same thing. But the data test ID is not show check-ins, but hide check-ins. So I'm just going to update this. And this will... Um, 
this will conclude um, all the five things that we have here in this spec file. So let's see what happens here. Uh, now, if I open this spec file, then Cypress is going to open a browser. It's going to load the, uh, the test. And you can see that it's already run the first test. And you can you can actually follow what is happening here. It's running here in the browser. Um, it's, uh, it's using Chrome. It can also use Firefox and Edge. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, uh, it checked whether the height was zero. It expected zero to be zero, so that's good. And then it found the check-ins button. You can see it highlighted. It clicked it. And after that, um, the, the panel has opened. And then um, we checked the height again. It was uh, 114, and that is more than zero. So we were happy about that. So then we found the other button. We clicked it. And um, then we checked if the, the panel was closed. And it was closed once we expected it to be zero. So this uh, test has, uh, has passed. Um, so then the next thing that we are going to do here is that we are going to check uh, whether we can click on the buttons and they can be registered, um, both with the panel closed and, uh, and the panel open. Um, so these buttons, they also have data test IDs and they also have data test values, which is one, two, three, four, and, uh, and five for, uh, from, from awful to awesome. Um, and, um, so let's, uh, let's just write this here first. Uh, we are going to, uh, check in with ourselves. That's a typo. So I'm just going to click the first button and then I'm going to click the third one, the fifth one, and then the third one again. And then I will expect that the average is going to show up here. So I'm just going to test uh, see this once again. We have this average mood here. So then I will say assert average mood. Now, uh, if I click one, three, five, and three, then the average should be three. So I'm just going to go with that. And then I will also assert the moods um, that will be uh, one, three, five, and three, uh, respectively. So I just want to see that the buttons I clicked will show up here in the, the same exact order. Um, and I will also want to show the check-ins panel um, before I, I check whether the average mood and the, um, the moods here are um, what we want, to, want them to be. So now here we have check-in and we have assert average mood and assert moods, which are three things that Cypress does not know how to do yet. Um, show check-ins is something that it already does know. So um, it's, it's right here. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to do this. Um, Checking first, so it's the same thing again. Cypress.comments.add uh, check in. It's going to be a function uh, which is going to take a number. I'm going to call it number mood, and it will have to find one of these buttons and and click it. So, um, well, nothing really new. Uh, so this have this data test ID. Uh, register mood button, and they also have this data test value as we've seen. So I'm just going to copy this here. And I want to find the one that has the same, um, um, same data test value uh, as the mood. So I'm just going to do a ci.get once again, and I will want to have two of these uh, attribute selectors. Uh, so I will just put them next to each other. Uh, once again, this is the same exact syntax that would work with document that query selector, or it would also work with uh, with CSS. So uh, you can you can just use this. Um, well, the one thing that we want to do, however, is to replace this one with mood. So for that, I'm just going to use a string template literal, and here instead of one, I'm going to add mood in here. And once we've found that button, we're just going to click it. Uh, I hope this works. It looks OK. Um, so then the next thing that we will have to do is uh, assert the average mood. Uh, so I'm going to create one more command for that, a assert average mood, uh, where the average mood is going to come here 
as a parameter. And once again, I'm going to check how this looks in the browser. Uh, there is an item called data test uh, ID average mode. So I'm just going to get that one. Um, and it also has this data test value, uh, which is set to three. Uh, it's very important to see that this is a string here. So we will have to do a little bit of a conversion here because we are, we are um, calling it with a number. Um, so I will have to get this attribute. Uh, I, will, I will have to use invoke again, the same way how I did, did it here. And I'm going to invoke an attribute, uh, specifically the data test value attribute. <clears throat> this is going to read that attribute. And then I say that I expect <clears throat> that it should be equal to, and here I will have to do the conversion from number to string. And I just have to convert this. Um, all right. And then the last thing is that we will have to assert the moods. Um, so we will have to make sure that the list, every list item here is um, corresponds to the numbers uh, that uh, that we call with them here. So I'm going to do cypress.comments that uh, add again. I'm going to use this assert moods, um, which is going to be the name. And then it's going to take an array, uh, which I'm going to call moods. And once again, we will have to do some kind of assertion here. Um, so these list items, uh, they have this data test ID checking list item, and they also have this uh, data test value. Um, so these are the um, these are the um, the attributes that I'm going to do uh, going to use. Uh, but for these moods, uh, this is an array, so I will have to check for each um of, of these items uh to to have the right one registered so i'm just going to do a for each i'm going to do moves that for each and for each mood i will do ci.get um, i will get the checking list items Um, and then I can find the one uh, with the, the correct number. Uh, you could use uh, that EQ with that uh, equals, um, and here just uh, give it a number. So for that, we will also need the index. That's the way of doing it. Um, and from that, we are going to use this data test value attribute, uh, where once again, I'm just going to use invoke uh data uh invoke uh, attributes data test value and i expect that to be uh equal to and here we're going to do a string conversion again uh with uh, with the specific mode uh, okay, so this is a bit complicated and I'm not even sure if it works. So let's get back with Cypress and see if um, see what happens. So now it says that uh, we have an error here, syntax error under cross-analyzed expression. I believe I'm missing a quote here. Um, Maybe it's a bit more helpful than that. Um, get data test ID register mood button. Um, that was here. All right, let's see if it works now. Data test ID average mood syntax error. Yeah, here I was missing the brackets. Yeah, and now it worked. So if you open this test, then we will see that it found the first button, it clicked it, found the third button, clicked it, fifth button, clicked it, third button again, clicked it again, and then it opened the panel. Uh, if I hover my mouse here for a second, then it will show me what happened, like how the application looked before and after. Then it found the average mode uh, and expected three, uh, which was the actual average to be three, which is which was the one that I specified. And then it checked for every single item if it has the correct value one, three, five, and three, which correspond with awful, okay, awesome, and okay. 
so this is great. Um, now we are going to write the second test uh, where it says that the check-ins are registered when the check-ins interface is open. So it's going to be a similar test than the, the previous one. Uh, where's my browser? Here we go. Um, so what we did now was click, 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 and then show it and check if these are here. And what we are going to do now is the same thing, but in a different order. We are going to show it and then click, 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 and make sure that these are still here. Um, so I'm actually just going to copy all this code because it's very, very similar. And I will change the order because the only thing that we're doing differently is that before the first check-in, we show the check-in panel. Um, so I'm just going to save this and go back to Cypress. And we can see that the third test has passed as well. Um, and uh, let's see what it does. It finds the button, then it clicks it. So that panel opens. And then we can see that as we are clicking the buttons, it is adding them. And um, we can see that um, we didn't have to teach Cypress anything new for this. So this still works. Um, all right, so the next thing that we are going to do is the, the dark mode. I have to be a bit respectful about uh, the time here. So I will try to do this um, very quickly. Um, so the way how we can uh, turn on and off the dark mode is opening the settings panel, clicking on this button, and then closing set the settings panel again. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, saying CI, oh my gosh, um, CI um, assert dark mode on. By default, it should be false. And then I'm going to toggle dark mode. And then I'm going to say assert dark mode on. This time it should be uh, true. Then I'm going to toggle it again. And eventually I'm going to see if, uh, if dark mode is false now. So these are the two things that we will have to teach Cypress now. I'm just going to do that real quick. I will say comments that add the first one we are doing is assert dark mode on. Um, and this is going to take a parameter called should be on, um, similarly to the, to the check-ins panel that we did earlier. Um, and um, yeah, if I go here, then you can see that uh, we have this application uh, or app component that has this data test dark mode set to true. And if I turn it off, then it switches to false. So we're just going to use this. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is uh, ci.get. Uh, once again, I will get the element, uh, the app element uh, by this data test ID. And then I will get the, I will invoke uh, the attribute, which is the this other attribute, uh, the data test dark uh, data test dark mode, and I will say that I um, expect that it should be equal to whether this should be on or not. Uh, once again, I will have to convert this to a string because these data attributes are, uh, are always um, giving you strings back. Uh, I hope this works. Uh, we'll see in a, in a minute. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, add this other command, which is toggling the dark mode. Uh, so once again, it's a function. This time it will not take any parameters. And what it will have to do is uh, just uh, um, clicking on the hamburger menu, clicking on the dark mode button, and then clicking on the X button. Um, so the hamburger menu is an element that has data test ID hamburger menu. Uh, that's going to make our life very easy here. So I'm just going to do CI dot uh, get, and I will add the data test ID attributes, uh, switch to single quotes and uh, add this, I'm going to click it. And then I will get the, the other button for, um, I'm sorry, I have so many windows. Um, then I'm going to get this other button for the dark mode uh, that has dark mode toggle button as a data test ID. Um, so once again, we use this, uh, the same syntax here. And then I'm going to click that too. 
um, and eventually I'm going to click the hamburger menu again. So hamburger menu, then the toggle button, and then we close the, the sidebar with the hamburger menu. Let's see if this works. Uh, these are all the three tests that were in the previous one. So if I go back here and I go to the settings pack, then we can see if this works as well. Yep, and it does. So it takes the application, it says that the dark mode is not turned on, um, and then it finds the hamburger menu, it clicks it, finds the toggle button, clicks it, and then closes it. Now the application is in dark mode, now we click it again, it opens again, we turn it off, we close it again, and we see that the, the dark mode is turned off. So this is, this is really great. Uh, now I'm going to stop this. And um, and uh, now we all have uh, all our Cy Cypress tests um, running and passing. So um, I'm going to create a new branch real quick. And I'm going to make a comment. And as I promised, I'm going to uh, create um, a new feature real quick. Uh, the only thing that I, I, I particularly dislike in this application is that when this panel here is closed, then even, even though I click the buttons, I get no feedback. So I don't know if anything is actually happening until uh, unless I, I actually open this. So I want to show some notifications here telling me that, OK, my um, 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 that that the, the the button click was registered um so there is this uh, custom hook i used for uh, use check-ins um and um this is just um, keeping all my check-ins with timestamps and the mood which is the number from one to five in an array um so i'm going to extend this a little uh i'm going to use this uh date as uh, well basically as an id so i will create a new um, variable here i'm going to just call it time uh, which is the one i'm going to use here um and uh, every time we have have a new check-in. I'm just going to um, say should um, show notification. I'm going to set it to true. Um, and here I'm going to hide it, uh, let's see, after three seconds. Um, so what I'm going to do here after three, three seconds is that I'm going to um, set the check-ins. Uh, Uh, if you're if you're using if you're, if you are familiar with um, with React, then uh, this is uh, hopefully uh, something which is which is familiar. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I I hope I'm doing this correctly. Um, I'm going to uh, get over all the, the check-ins I had previously. I'm going to map over them, and for uh, every single one uh, which uh, does not have the uh, the ID or which is basically the time that, uh, that I was using, I'm going to leave it impact, intact. So if the time is not the same thing as uh, checking the time, then I'm not going to do anything with the check-in. So I'm just going to return it as is. Uh, and if it is the one, then I'm going to return um, with an object uh, with everything that it had inside, but I'm going to take the should show notification and turn it to false. Um, and uh, I'm very insecure about this. I have no idea if this works. So let's uh, let's try to check it out. Um, I will use the React components um, toolbar. And here in app, we have the check-in state, which is just an empty array now. So let's see if I click this. Yeah, it's true. And in three seconds, it should hopefully turn to false. Yeah. So one, two, three, four more. False, false, false. And the last one turned to false as well. Um, so now we have this in the state, and we can show the notifications for this. Um, so let's uh, let's do that very quickly. Uh, here in the app.js file, we have all the components. So I'm just going to create a new one called notifications. Um, I will obviously need all these check-ins that I have. So I'm just going to use that here as a prop. 
um, and I will import uh, these notifications from this new component I'm going to create called notifications. Um, so let's create that component real quick. It's going to be super simple. Uh, I will say uh, const notifications, it's going to be a simple function component um, and it will get the, the check-ins as props. And uh, first I want to filter only the ones that we want to show the notifications for. So I'm going to say const uh, relevant check-ins. Uh, which is not a beautiful name that uh, let's let's just go with this for now. Uh, I will say that check-ins that filter and I only want to keep the check-ins that have uh, this uh, should show notification, I believe was it should show notification. Um, and then we are just going to uh, like if uh, we have yeah, let's just say return and uh, we will have a diff here. let's give it a class name uh, notifications and uh, for each relevant notification that we want to show uh, we are going to render uh, let's see another div let's call it class notification and here I'm just going to say uh, your mood was registered. Uh, I can also put notification that would here in parentheses just so I can see that it actually works. So let's explore this real quick. And if this is correct, yeah, we can see that the notifications are here and then they disappear. Um, so this actually works. Uh, let's let's add some styles real quick. Um, so now I'm going to say import uh, notifications.css and I'm going to create a new file called notifications.css. And uh, here I created two class names, notifications and notification. So let's use those. So notifications is going to be, let's let's move them to the right bottom corner. So I'm just going to say position um, fixed and uh, it will have 100% height. Uh, it will have, let's say 320 pixels in width. Um, and then it's going to be display flex uh, where we are going to do justify content flex and so they go to the bottom uh, they will have to be in columns right so we have to do flex direction column um i think that's pretty much it right uh let's see if this uh this works now uh, oh yeah, uh, I did not position it, so I'm going to move it to the bottom and I'm going to move it to the right side. Yeah, and now they are they are all here. And for each notification, uh, let's just give it some uh, uh, some. Uh, I have a typo here. Um, let's just give it some 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 quick styles. Um, so I, I will say border one pixel solid black. And they are here and let's give them some spacing. So I'm going to give it some margin on the top side, 10 pixels, so they are not stuck on each other. And then the noti notifications area is going to have some padding on the left side, 10 pixels, and some padding on the bottom side. 10 pixels, so it's not hitting the corner. Uh, no, the other left. Yeah, and we can see that uh, that these are here, and now they are disappearing. Um, well, all right, so this works perfectly right. So if I just go here and I want to make sure that my application did not break, then I can just run npm run test again, and we can see that all our unit tests are still passing uh, with that um, 
very high coverage that we had, so nothing actually broke. Uh, but if uh, you paid attention uh, and uh, and um, you were uh, very quick to to find this out, then uh, you might have realized that uh, that I actually made made a bug. So let's see what Cypress has to say about that. I'm just going to start it once again. And I'm going to run the end-to-end -end test that I have written. And then we will see that they are actually breaking. It is trying to click this element and it can't. And then it goes to the next test. Once again, it's trying to click the button and it can't. Uh, so we, we have these two tests breaking here. So what is the reason for that? Um, it says that it timed out uh, after retrying this because it is being covered by another element, which is the notifications element. So the reason for this is uh, that for the notifications element, I gave it 100% height. And because of that, it covered the other element and uh, therefore it could not be clicked. So now if I remove this one and rerun the tests, then we can see that the end-to-end -end tests are passing again and we have um, caught and fixed the bug. Um, well, we are very, very close to the end of this session and this was pretty much everything I, uh, I wanted to show. So we have, uh, okay, I wanted to share my screen still, sorry. Um, so uh, I wanted to open open this up to a few questions, um, but before I do that, just very quickly, um, the every, every single line of code that I wrote here is going to be uh, available here on on GitHub, um, and um, uh, well, we have the application there, and I'm also going to commit this and and push this, so you will be able to take a look if you want to um, after the session. So we only have about like a minute left. I'm not sure if it's okay if we go a bit over time. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, then I'm very happy to answer. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much. Uh, that was in quite impressive. Uh, I must say that uh, chaining rocks really in, in JavaScript, like everything was made with uh, chained functions, which was impressive. And um, uh, I. I have a question that I think uh, a lot of the people uh, are probably uh, also wondering. Um, we saw Cypress uh, work along with React. Can we use Cypress with vanilla JavaScript? Um, yes, you, in, in, in fact, you can. Uh, Cypress is agnostic to the framework that you're using. So for as long as um, you, uh, uh, you're using a browser and you're using the DOM, Cypress will be able to run in there. Um, so ab absolutely no problem. The only thing that I would really recommend is that you use this the data test ID or data test uh, attributes uh, because that is going to make your life uh, a lot easier and, and also um, it's uh, a very elegant way. But for as long as you're using a framework that can do that or if you're just using you know HTML or, or no, JavaScript, um, it's, it's absolutely no problem. It can run on whatever. Uh, so uh, please post your questions on um, the Q&A. Uh, uh, so uh, we have a question. Um, so Cypress does not allow access to redirect another URL within the test case. If we have some authentication in between, then how do we solve this issue? Um, yeah, we that that is that is uh, one of the limitations of Cypress at the moment. Um, well, what I can tell you about that is that uh, the Cypress team uh, is um, continuously working on improving Cypress, and they use this um, uh, they use GitHub uh, issues um, and votes on GitHub issues. So, if there is something that you would like to see working in Cypress, then um, then file an issue on GitHub, or if uh, you can find the issue that you're you uh, uh, that you want fixed then upload it and then their product team is going to prioritize the bugs that has have the the highest number of uploads um so that is definitely an issue that i have uploaded and if you want it fixed then i recommend that you do the same thank you uh, so um uh, another question uh, that that came to mind about the the data ids that you used uh, are these uh, do these attributes also remain in in production code? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, well, 
that that kind of depends. You can also use uh, Cypress on your actual production site, um, and uh, and you can also create some kind of mechanism that deletes these attributes before you're actually publishing to production. If you just want to run them in your continuous integration framework, or if you just want to run them locally, so uh, that that should be no problem. Um, well, I. I understand why you would want to not have them in production, and um, and I I see no reason why um, uh, why that would be a problem. Uh, but if you uh, if you want to, you can also avoid using them. So if you feel comfortable doing the assertions based on element types or class names or or the text that you have in your application, then you don't need to add these data test attributes in the first place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um... We have a couple of minutes, so if you have any questions. Um, another question, uh, Cypress, Cypress tests can be integrated with CI, CD pipelines, uh, continuous integration, continuous development pipelines. Um, yes, yeah, so let me show you how that, uh, how that works. I'm just going to say added new feature, uh, added uh, notifications. And I'm just going to push this branch real quick. Uh, as I said, I have this up on uh, GitHub. Um, so let me open my GitHub real quick. Uh, because in this repository, I actually have um, uh, I actually have set up the CI for that. Um, so it's here in the workflows. Uh, it's a YAML file of only 20 lines. You, I mean, in this case with, uh, with um, uh, Create React App, you just have to say that it should start the application with npm start, and then it should listen on uh, localhost port 3000. And if I create the pull request, um, then I probably have a typo in there. Uh, uh, then you will be able to see, hopefully in a second, that uh, yeah, it, it started uh, running it here. Um, so uh, this workflow is running, uh, like here I did Cypress open. I also have uh, Cypress uh, CI, uh, which I added to the package JSON file. And this is just going to run Cypress uh, without the, the user interface. And it also has a very amazing feature. Every time a test fails, it will create a recorded video of the test failure, which you can save in your CI, or you can even open it locally, and then you will be able to see what has actually failed. So it gives you more than uh, than just the text output. Wow, that was that is impressive, amazing. I didn't uh, know you can uh, have the video. So uh, thank you answering this question uh, if you have any other questions so as, as you can see like uh, a rough overview of, of cypress of end-to-end -end, uh, uh, testing with cypress is like having a robot uh, instruct a robot to open your application in the browser uh, click interact with the application as many times as you want check to see that everything works and then inform you in case something was uh, broken or something changed uh, after one of your commits or one of your changes. And um, I have to say that the, the tests that uh, we uh, run, even for this short presentation, would have taken lots and lots of uh, minutes or even hours uh, for a person to just manually open the page and test the application. So we're like, uh, we have a huge win here. Uh, and keep in mind that we have to constantly run these tests all the time after each change. So uh, this would cost us a lot if we had people, actual uh, humans running the tests manually and uh, opening the application and testing it um, manually. So this is like a, a huge gain. Um, that was quite impressive, uh, I must say. <laughs> uh, everything went so smoothly. So uh, you, uh, there were like, uh, just a few typos, so it was also improving, uh, impressive on your part, Benz, like uh, the whole coding session. Um, thank you very much for uh, uh, being here and showing us this uh, amazing framework. Uh, I hope that um, this presentation made you uh, think and consider um, using a testing uh, framework like Cypress for doing end-to-end -end, um, tests. 
because we saw like uh, one example where um, the smaller unit tests were uh, able to to pass, but when all these uh, uh, things combined together, uh, we had some uh, uh, malfunctioning, some error. So uh, make sure to uh, go to the GitHub repository, start the repository, and uh, try Cypress on your uh, own applications. So uh, once again, a big thanks, uh, Benz, for being here and for this eye-opening session. And so of course, uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending and, and joining us. So uh, enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, thank you uh, once again for this uh, awesome presentation. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge. It was a pleasure to have you as part of the Hack the Tech Industry podcast. You can join our live event every last Wednesday of the month, remember, and check our social media to get to know more about our coming events.